I'm sat down, so uh, you're probably wondering why. Uh, probably not. But I'm going to show you all the helmets that I have currently, bar one. Um, I'm going to go in order of period. Uh, so I'm going to start from the very beginning here. Um, this is probably not a good example of uh, the kind of helmets that I own, but I have some nice ones and I have some terrible ones. This is probably a terrible one. I can't even wear it properly because the uh, inside padding or leather liner is, is just completely off. So, yeah. Uh, shall I wear all these helmets? Yeah, let's, let's go for that and, and see, what, see what happens. So, I've even taken the string out. So, it should sit on the head. I need to take my glasses off. Um, right. So it sits on my head currently like that, but it should sit on the head like that. This is a Corinthian design, um, worn by Hellenic uh, peoples, so not only the Greeks, but early Romans, um, and maybe some Thracians, so maybe Scythians, uh, tribes and all that. It kind of, it may have spread out that far, maybe, I don't know particularly. My knowledge on Hellenic Greek kind of period is kind of loose. Um, but that's the earliest design of helmet that I have currently. Uh, the next one will be, skipping along quite at some time, is my Roman helmet. Um, this is also a fairly cheap one. However, what it is, is actually really handy. It has got the, the string thing that you can actually have the cheeks here. Um, and it sits quite nicely on the head. Um, however, this is definitely a cheap reproduction. Um, I think the brass fittings on the ears are, are starting to come a little bit loose. Um, but for, for the artwork that I need it for, it actually fits really well. And um, the design, I don't need to manipulate much if I'm doing kind of first century. Yeah, probably about first century um, helmet. Um, it does come with a fitting for a officer's crest, um, but I don't have that attached. I've got it here. Um, I think. Right, let's, let's put it on. Okay, so it has um, string attachings for uh, the front and the back of the crest, um, and this will be officers, not centurion. The centurion goes um, side to side. Uh, and this is what it would look like. There's a lot of weight on that actually. It's, it's a lot heavier than you think it is, especially when the it's it's a lot taller. Whereas the um, the crest on the uh, Greek helmet is a lot more attached to the helmet, um, so it's a bit it's a bit wobbly. So I'm going to take this off. Um, I haven't really used this properly yet. Um, neither the Greek one because. I haven't really got around to doing any kind of first century Roman stuff. However, I've bought a couple of Osprey books that I can um, use as reference. Uh, Alright, moving along. <coughs> My late Roman Berg helmet. This does have the string attached to it. Um, and it's not going to fit on my head because um, I'm a prune. Right. This is a bit big for my head, um, however, when it goes, when I use this for photo reference, I can quite easily uh, make this helmet smaller, um, but make it look like it actually fits my head properly. Um, this is probably about 5th century, maybe late 4th century. Um, you know, uh, during the period of Constantine um, and, you know, partition of the empire um, and, uh, you know, when the barbarians uh, started to invade. Um, so this is extremely early on in the, in the migration era. Um, literally the, the starting point. Um, I think this particular helmet was discovered in England. I might be completely wrong. Um, but this is almost a Spangenhelm design with the different pieces constructing it together um, and riveting together. And this is when I start going through all my Spangenhelm helmets because they, they're quite cheap and um, 
I like migration era stuff. Migrate. Uh, hang on. Migration era stuff is um, usually considered Dark Age period. So this is um, this is a Spangenhelm design. Uh, this is cost about seventy quid. Um, so it's not bank killing, but it's also um, not not particularly the most cheapest helmet I've bought. Um, so yeah, it also comes with cheap pieces. Um, I don't think this is a historically accurate helmet by that much. However, for what I can, what I've used it for, it's been extremely useful, um, especially for the conical design and the cheap pieces. This nasal part is way too long. It goes right down to my mouth. I, I'm was considering actually sawing it off so it actually fits on the nose properly. Uh, so yeah. One of the Spangen Helms. Um, next one. <clears throat> this is a very simple design that you could probably um, use as secret helms or surveillers um, in artwork. Um, this is a literally a bowl, um, and the, the the bands on it um, are, are, are fake. <laughs> I think this is just one shaped bar and someone's riveted uh, bands across it to make it look like it's a Spangen Helm. However, it's, I don't think it is. Um, however, this is extremely useful because it actually fits my head. I have a pretty small head. Um, <clears throat> so whenever I do use a lot of these helmets, like that Berg one, it's a lot, <laughs> it's very big for my head, but for a normal person, I reckon uh, they'll be okay. I have a small head, yet yeah, I'm 5'11", 6 foot. Oh well, so this is quite useful because of the, the bowl shape and that can be used for different uh, purposes in my artwork. I've probably used it a few times. Um, I'll put the artwork up if, if it comes across um, quite obvious that I've used this in my, uh, in my paintings. Uh, here's another one. I think I've used this once. I've taken out the, uh, the string that actually um, holds your head in. So this is probably not going to work well but this was literally a very cheap helmet it will sit about here on the head um, because of the leather um, webbing design um, that is used to take the impact of blows however um, this does need a clean um, and I think I bent it into shape this is literally using sheet steel um, so this is the che cheapest of cheap stuff um, it's probably the cheapest helmet I've actually bought apart from one of my Norman conical designs. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> this is probably, this is considered Spang and Hell maybe? Probably not. Um, Volga, Bulgaria, Russia, Rus, all them kind of eastern parts um, was in this kind of style. Um, and a lot of the designs, I think this is moving on to a probably <sighs> Volga Bulgaria or the Rus. I would probably put that in the 9th century to 12th maybe. I'm probably completely wrong here. Um, it does come up with a strap but I never really use that. I sometimes use this with a padded cap because it's not a very comfortable helmet. Um, but this is strictly for artwork. Um, not for um, reenactment or anything like that. Um, these, this, this, um, I think this is like zinc plated um, mail, uh, uh, avon tail that is butted. That is the worst kind of mail you're ever going to get. By the way, um, if you're kind of new to armor or medieval stuff, this is called mail, it's not called chain mail. Um, try and get that in your head because a lot of people who aren't really, if you see that in documentaries and they mention chain mail, it's not chainmail, it's mail. Um, so yeah, moving on. I'm probably going to go back a couple of centuries, but this is uh, a Viking design. I wouldn't say it's particularly Viking. However, the the helmet itself is designed on a helmet that was from... I can't pronounce it. Um, and it's one of the, one of the only real... Um, what, I, what I know of anyway. 
um, of um, a, a Norse helmet from the Viking period. Um, and this is also a, an extremely cheap um, helmet. I think, I think I've taken up the string. Yeah, I have. Um, so this should fit on the head around here. Um, and it's your yeah, probably most iconic helmet design. Um, it's got a spike on top. The actual original one did have a spike on top. Um, I think this is probably just a bowl and these uh, bands here are fake. Um, this is too big. The helmet in, in itself is too big. Um, the mail is again zinc plated and butted. So this is the worst kind of Aventel you're probably going to get. This won't take any blows of any kind um, in real life. But this is strictly for my artwork and I think I've used this twice in a couple of paintings. Um, <clears throat> Alright, moving along to a kind of Norman period. This one fits on my head quite nicely. And it's actually really comfortable, um, really cheap. I think this was like £40, um, British pounds. And um, I've used this quite a lot in my artwork, strictly because the fact that it's such a simple design. Um, uh, and the other one as well. Um, very comfortable, very cheap. Uh, yeah, it's it's used in the normal period. So, Battle of Hastings all the way until I'd probably say oh, eleven, the late the late twelfth century maybe. This could probably considered, um, but the design itself you're talking eleventh century strictly, um, especially by the fact that it's not a Spanian helm. It's a conical design used on one piece of steel, which is, um, apart from this nasal part, um, a lot of um, helmets started to use one piece of steel instead of using banded parts and then riveted together. Um, only because that's a stronger design. Um, the next one, whoop, this is probably, <laughs> yeah, again, a very cheap helmet, 40 quid, um, very useful, you know, if and it fits on my head really well actually. Um, very tight to the face. Um, I wouldn't say this would be used as a, as a secret helm or anything like that. Um, but it's really good for archers from uh, or you know men at arms and you know lower tier infantry uh, soldiers from 11th century or way up until. You could probably put this in the. 13th, 14th century and still use it as uh, for artwork um, only, not for, I wouldn't say for, for reenactment, this you know this wouldn't take any blows, the, the, the steel itself is really ugh, cheap um, but it's, it's a really simple design and I would recommend that if you're going to use this for reference only. Um, so moving on um, to probably about late 14th century. This is my hound skull helmet, which is good and bad. Um, I, <laughs> I've sold enough t-shirts to actually buy this. Um, so it was, you guys were the reason I actually have this helmet and it needs a good clean, I think. But it has proper mail. Um, this is nine millimeter riveted a male and you know it, it, it really you can really tell a difference between the zinc plated and the real proper riveted um, iron links um, however bad in the fact that it doesn't come up to the chin properly um, and also the helmet itself doesn't have um, the Aventel does not have padded um, underneath it's not padded underneath because it just didn't come with that. However, it does need that. I do have like a, a collar that's um, padded, which I use in HEMA, um, and I've used this helmet in a piece and had this underneath. It goes under the collar like that, and then shall I put this on? Yeah, go on. Let's put this on. What? Right, I can't see well because it does the, the visor doesn't the visor doesn't come down enough. 
Um, I can actually see pretty well, but if I straighten out the oven tail. Now the visor itself has got pretty good vision. I can see, I can still see my hands by doing that. Um, I'm struggling here. Um, I can see down because of the breadth, um, and I can see in front of me quite well. I can't see up at all. Um, and I'd say this is a good helmet because it's really good for the period, um, and it's a very comfortable helmet. This is a a, a small fit um, for what I bought it for, and it's, it's it's padded. the The lining is padded. It's so comfy. It's unbelievably comfy. Um, so, yeah, this is a really good helmet. However, it does have some downs. You know the. I would say the proportions of the um, the visor aren't quite there. However, that's very easy to um, change in my artwork, and I can get it spot on. Um, the Aventel, um the veils, which are holding in the Aventel, um should really go up to my brow, um, but it's going down to probably my cheek, my cheekbone. Um, the visor doesn't stay up. I have to keep it like that. Because otherwise it just falls. Um, but that's not too much of an issue. This is not for um, a reenactment. It's for my artwork, and this does the job really well. So yeah, let's take this off if I can. I'm stuck. I'd say the proportions of the actual bassinet itself um, aren't quite there, but yeah, again, very easy to change. Um, so I really want to do that's some more 14th century, 15th century, really early 15th century um, stuff with Houndskull. So like Battle of Shrewsby, Battle of Agincourt, um, not Cressy, um, Poitiers, uh, the Battle of Poitiers where the uh, French king was captured. Um, so yeah, moving on, salads. I have three salads. Pronounced salad, not salad. Um, this is a British word, not a French word. Um, so this is more of a German design. Um, I do have, um, let's put that up. I do have, um, I've got four bevers, and not one of them fits properly. Um, this is probably the best one I have, um, and it fits to about there. So it comes up to about my nose, and it should really go up up to my nose. Um, so let's just take the visor down, um, and it should fit like that. Um, so it's covering my mouth. Um, later designs are fixed, um, so it's actually one whole helmet, um, but that's that's really late on the 15th century. Um, yeah. So this is co considered gothic design, um, especially with this tail um, pointing downwards. Milanese tend to be a lot straighter. Um, but yeah, this is good. Have I used this? Yes, I have. I've used this on a couple of pieces. Um, one called Elite. Um, and uh, yeah, so moving on, next salad. This is a really cheap one. I don't think I've used this just yet, um, but the tail is different um, and the visor is different. Instead of a full uh, frontal one, it's just the bottom part. Um, I still need to use this, but it's um, when I do get around to doing some more 15th century, mid 15th century stuff, this is going to come real handy because it stays up quite nicely and I like the shape of the design. This would never be used for reenactment. This would kill you probably if you got hit in the head with a pole axe. Um, but the shape of it is really nice, and this can be used in my artwork quite um, efficiently. Um, yeah, other bever designs. I've got this one here that's pretty broken. Doesn't even stay up. Um, the uh, the, uh, the the face piece. Um, this one is too big too wide um, from both of the helmets um, I've got a full face one to use with a kettle helmet I don't have a kettle helmet yet 
Um, I think the closest one I have is a Morion helmet. But that has got the eyepieces and then you'd have your helmet over the top of that. Um, so yeah, that's quite new. I want to use that for a, for a couple of new pieces of artwork. This is my open bassin uh, not bassinet, salad helmet. It's got a string hanging down there. This is a very expensive helmet. The, the st you could use this in reenactment. Proper steel. Um, the, um, it's, it is lined on the inside instead of padded liner, um, so it's leather liner. However, I would probably use one of uh, like a padded cap like that underneath, um, and that should take any blows. But I'm not really intending on doing any reenactment. I would like to, but I'm I'm actually doing HEMA at the moment, so I'm learning that how to actually fight proper properly. Um, let's put that down there. Oh yeah, I do like the silhouette of this. That kind of sweeping in motion. Um, the silhouette of this is actually quite nice. Um, used by normal infantry men at arms um, in the, I'd probably put this in the mid 15th century. Um, right up until the late 15th century. Um, so moving on into the 16th century, I have two helmets. This one is very old. The bever is coming loose. Um, this is a burgonet and it looks quite nice. However, very cheap. Um, I think it was about 70 quid uh, online. Um, it doesn't have. It doesn't even have a leather liner on the inside, so you have to use a padded cap. However, I have used this in a few pieces and it's come in real handy. Um, it's got a collapsing uh, bever, so this will come down if it decides to, that it wants to do that. Yeah, it will come down and then it will come up like that. Um, very iconic to the 16th century. Um, not late 16th century, I'd say. Um, but it's, it's got that nice comb um, and the, uh, if you take the visor off, Um, this is used in uh, kind of like demi um, demi armor uh, or demi suits of armor, where it's um, used for cavalry quite a lot. Um, this brow here is quite good at deflecting anything um, coming from above. Um, it's got cool cheap pieces. Uh, I would say this did de developed from the armet. Maybe I might be completely wrong, only because um, and the clothes helm. Um, only because of the uh, the cheek parts coming in, um, I would say it may be developed from that. Maybe completely wrong, but it, it is very similar. Um, I've got another burgonet here. I have used this in, in one piece, I think. Um, uh, this doesn't have cheek pieces that you can close together, so I use a piece of shoelace. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. I won't put it on because it might it will take forever to put on. Um, but when I bought this it said it was Scottish I don't know whether this is Scottish or not it may be used by the Gallo glass or um, Irish mercenaries, Scottish mercenaries maybe, I reckon this is probably a design that was used throughout um, Europe or Western Northern Europe in the 16th century ok, so next one is another one from the um, 16th century is a Morian helmet very iconic I wouldn't say conquistadors wore this. They probably wore more of a kettle design. Um, apparently, this is more a German design. Um, um, I can't pronounce the name. The mercenary German mercenaries and Swiss mercenaries may have used this, like halberdiers and and stuff like that. But in in uh, specifically the f 16th century. Um, so yeah, this is quite an iconic. Um, piece. Oh, this is quite new, so I haven't actually used this in any of my artwork yet. Um, so yes, right, jumping quite some time into the late 19th century is my my pickle halb, which is um, a Germanic design um, used all the way through Germany, Austria, 
um, the Norse countries I think did use a design like this. If you look at Chilean guards in Chile, which is in South America, they actually use this um, uh, as part of their parade uniform, which is quite interesting. Um, but it, I think this helmet in particular has got a Prussian eagle. Um, has it got a, a name on it? Uh, ER. I don't know what king that would be. I know it's FR. I can't really know. Um, I, I am a fan of the Prussians in terms of its history. They've done bad and good things, but I find them fascinating. Um, and I've used this in airsoft, so it's got a few airsoft dents. Um, I'll bring up a picture. It's, it's hilarious running around with this on. Um, next one. Oh, actually, I have this just for laughs. Also, for the fact that it makes a good reference, I'd use this in any 19th century stuff, early 19th century, um, maybe late 18th century. Um, this is a, a shako, um, or a, yeah, I don't think this stovepipe kind of design. Stovepipes tend to be a lot longer. Um, but this is a parade uniform thing. <laughs> So it even came with a heather, like a feather attachment for, but um, yeah, if I do any eight, early 18th century, no, early 19th century stuff, this is probably what I'd use. Um, and this is my latest um, period of helmet, my um, my German um, helmet that I've used in airsoft, very comfy. Um, I've attached a bike strap, bike helmet strap to this. So it, it, it doesn't move around much. With the, the single strap design, um, this was my head was just moving all the way over the place whenever I was running around on the field when I was doing airsoft. Um, it's actually quite a good helmet in its design. Um, I think modern day or uh, the American helmets are actually slightly based on this. Um, they've got the bit that comes down here. Um, this helmet in particular was actually uh, kind of inspired during World War One when this started to be used. Not this particular design, but this particular shape of for the Germans was based on um, salad designs. Um, uh, so yeah, I do have actually. I lie. This isn't. There's all the helmets I have here, but I do have an American World War Two helmet and a British World War One and Two helmet. Um, and I do have a cheap plastic airsoft um, modern kind of warfare helmet. Um, so yeah, those are all my helmets that I have. Um, I do like helmets um, <laughs> and uh, I like the, the development over a period. Um, uh, I enjoy studying that kind of stuff. Not only the uh, the helmet in itself, but the the armors, the uniform, uh, the reason why they developed and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully I don't appear too crazy. I do have reasons why I use these helmets, um, and I use them uh, when I need them. Um, I don't buy them willy nilly. I buy them for a particular purpose. If I have a kind of uh... well, now I'm a cartoon now, so I was probably wittering on a little bit about the reason why I actually own helmets, and I was trying to justify the reason why I have so many helmets. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to kind of say that I have t-shirt designs that I've designed over the past few years. Um, I'm currently wearing my Spartan one now. Um, if you uh, wanted a design, say, that's medieval or Viking or anything in that kind of uh, historical style genre, whatever you want to call it, I have plenty of those um, on Redbubble. Um, I have just started doing some different designs, so I've done some animal ones um, from photos that I've taken uh, from Whipsnade Zoo in England. Um, so a couple of rhino designs, a water buck, which is like an antelope, and I've done a lynx. I think that's it. Anyway, if you're interested, there are t-shirts in the description below. Um, so yes, goodbye.